valuation, valuation. This is our underlying view of the business. You've got a 50-50 chance, link ladies, of getting this right. Alright, this is our view of underlying business value. Do you think that's, and again, people can get confused with English terms here, is that pre-finance or post-finance? It's the underlying view of business value, it's the, our view of underlying business value, is that pre-finance or post-finance? What do we think? 50-50 chance here. It's oh, it's, it's so, it's so you've, got, you've got a 50-50 chance. Anybody got a different answer? Well, in English, we probably say it's pre, uh, and, and, and in evaluation, we probably say it's a pre-finance number. It's probably a pre-finance number. Pre-finance number. Do you agree? Pre-finance number? Yeah, you, you I'm a trader, aren't I? Oh, so this is a pre-finance number. This is before, uh, this is another way of thinking about it, this is before the business is divided up between banks and shareholders. That's why I would say it's a pre-finance value. All right? So, store this away. Store this away. In fact, it might be helpful to write a note. It's, it's the view of underlying business value. What we would say, it's the value before the business is divided up between banks and shareholders. We'd probably say it's a pre-finance value. What were you going to say? Pre-finance. Pre-finance. Pre yeah, because it ignores the capital structure. It does. It does. And, and, and you're saying like a man who's had a flirtation with valuation and finance at some time. Because that's what the finance jocks would say. The finance experts would say. It doesn't take account. This is before you... Uh, decide how much debt you're going to put in the business before you decide what the capital structure is going to be. Absolutely right. We would say it's a pre-finance value. Okay, so store that away, write it down in your packs, perhaps on this chart, it's a pre-finance value, it's our view of underlying business value, it's pre-finance value. Now, I'm going to ask you to focus up here, uh, I know you're not an accountant, so I'm pushing the limits with you guys, and I'm going to ask you to imagine a profit and loss statement, and you guys don't need to understand all the stuff, I'm sure. Now, what's at the top of the profit and loss statement? Very easy question, Jamie. What's at the top of the profit and loss statement? The revenues, revenues, or sales. Okay, and then we have, uh, in, in English anyway, I don't know whether you use the same terms, we have cost of sales. What would you call the next line down? Gross profit. And then we have admin costs. And then what we have is uh, EBIT. Okay? Well, I tell you what, let's do it this way. Admin costs excluding, I'm just getting a little bit more prescriptive. We could deconstruct it this way, if you like. So the way we could do it is we could have gross profit, admin costs, we get down to EBITDA, then we could take off our depreciation and amortization. Ask me in a break if you don't know what those are. We could get down to EBIT. All right, then we take off our interest costs. So what I'm doing is I'm working my way down the P&L. These are my costs of financing the business. And I get down eventually to net profit before tax. And then I'm running out of space. You know what's coming next. I know, Carl, you know this. We take off the tax, then we're down to net profit after tax. Correct? Absolutely. All right. So, the profit after tax, EBIT down. Right. I'm going to ask you to think in your minds. EBIT down, net profit after tax. EBIT down, net profit after tax. Which of those numbers? I know people can get confused with English. Which of those numbers is the pre-finance one? EBIT down. Oh, you guys are hot. All right, you guys are hot. I know the guys from Madrid had a good night out last night. Uh, we can get that on tape if you like. Uh, EBITDA is the pre-finance number. Right, so what's this chart about here? This is a chart for valuation people. This is a chance for finance jobs. This is a chart really for bankers, not lawyers. What I'm going to tell you is what we would do when we're valuing a business. When we're trying to get to the pre-finance value, when we're trying to get to the pre-finance value, what we would do is take pre-finance earnings. All right, when we're trying to get to the pre-finance value, we take pre-finance earnings, multiply them by our multiple. To get to the shares value, to get from here to here, what we do is we subtract the debt. When I say to bankers, 
which route do you tend to go? Now, we'll tend to do me this one. They tend to tell me this one. The reason that they go this route to value businesses, and you guys don't need to know this, the reason they go this route is that all of the analysis strips out the impact of what you were saying, sir, capital structure. When they go that route one to value a business, it strips out the impact of capital structure. This is a pre-finance value to get to our pre-finance, so this is a pre-finance earnings to get to our pre-finance value, subtract the debt to shares value. If I survey bankers, and I do this in my rooms when I've got bankers, if I say to them, uh, if I can give you two routes to value the business, which would, which would you prefer to go? And they would always go this route one here. That's why I've got that one up there, more common. Okay, so the route a banker would take to value a business, you knew some of you before you came into the room that it was about a multiple of earnings. The thing that I'm teaching you now is that the way that they would do this is they would take the pre-finance earnings, multiply that by an enterprise value, which is the same as our debt-free cash-free value, to EBITDA multiple. Okay, so they take the pre-finance earnings times the EBITDA multiple, gives them the enterprise value, which we're saying is the same as debt-free cash-free, subtract the debt, gives us the shares value. That's the route a bank would go to value a business. You don't need to know that as part of your jobs. But if you're interested, if you are interested, I will email to Anna a copy of the slides that you're seeing, which are a little bit more detailed than the pack you've got in front of you. So you will get a copy of this coming through. Right, so let's sit our exam. You guys are all relaxing, maybe going to sleep. Uh, I'll I'll, the second group here. Second group here. Just have a, have a look at the screen. Bankers. The bankers, are they going to take the pre-finance earnings or the after-finance earnings? They're going to take EBITDA or net profit after tax. What do you think? What's the banker going to do? EBITDA. Pardon? EBITDA. Absolutely. He's going to go that route, isn't he? Okay, so, Lee, ladies, I'm giving you a few clues here. The banker, I've just given you the lecture, the <coughs> banker is going to go with one or four. One. Who's saying one? You've got a 50-50 chance, haven't you? <laughs> all right, who's saying one? Has a bit high, be proud, come on. All right, all right. Nobody likes lawyers who are not prepared to give uh, opinions, strong opinions. All right, so hands up high again. Who's thinking it's one? Uh, you, I'm, I'm teaching you too well. All right, let's, let's try. Let's try and see what happens. Okay, so you don't need to worry about this too much. What we know is that, that businesses are valued as a multiple of earnings. The bankers will take this funny thing here, EBITDA, Earnings before interest, tax, appreciation, and amortization. Multiply them by uh, a multiple and subtract the value of debt. Let's see if we're right. Fabulous. Well done. <laughs>